Hello and welcome to Light Warrior Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Karen Can, author of the number one best-selling book, Sensitivity is Your Superpower, How to Harness Your Gifts, Fulfill Your Purpose, and Create a Life of Joy. And I absolutely love, love, love interviewing people who are doing some really neat things with regards to self-healing. Because um, for those that have been following, you know that I was in the movie, The Inside Effects. And uh, that's free, by the way, at theinsideeffects.com. It's all about the body healing itself. So, so I'm literally at the Lake Clear Lodge. We're doing this, this launch of this movie. And my very, very, very good friend, Kathy Holmeyer, she says, you've got to interview Kathleen Nagy. And I said, who's that? <laughs> she says, you're the sound lady. And I'm like, oh, I'm intrigued. Sound? Oh, that's very interesting. I'm very interested in that. And she goes, oh, yeah, it's all about humming for health. I'm like, that's even more interesting to me, right? So it's been a while, but it's like, you know, like scheduling and, you know, all sorts of things. And finally, we are so happy <laughs> to have Kathleen here. And let me share a little bit more about her before I formally welcome her. She is known as the Sound Lady. Uh, she offers a very unique approach to holistic wellness through sound energy. With over 20 years of experience as a bioacoustic research associate, she specializes in voice energy analysis for sports or muscle uh, muscle injuries. As a classically trained musician with a background in music education and French horn from Ithaca College, so closer to where I am in New York, and graduate work at Yale University in French horn and conducting, Kathleen combines science and intuition to provide sound-based harmonic healing. Her services at thesoundlady.com includes personal chakra scale sessions, a guided meditation which vibrates your chakras with your voice to calm emotions, and how to take a sonic selfie to see how to use customized notes to balance your energy. Kathleen's journey from symphony orchestra to sound healing was propelled by her personal experiences with the power of sound. Sound energy emerges as a non-invasive side effect free alternative for those sensitive to pharmaceuticals. Yes. <laughs> it also offers a self-healing approach through personalized frequencies gleaned from recordings of your own voice. So this is super, super exciting to have you here. Kathleen, thank you so much for spending your time with us. It is my pleasure. It's great to meet you. Yeah, it's great to meet you. Now, I, you probably don't know this, but um, I actually studied classical piano for quite a number of years. Now, piano is probably the easiest instrument to play, uh, but I, all, well, all Chinese, you know, children in Canada, uh, first generation, they all know how to play the piano, you know, and many of them, they do flute and violin, and I just didn't have the bandwidth for that. But uh, so I am classically trained and um, I've always loved to sing. And what's very interesting is I never once thought about humming, per se, as, a, for lack of a better word, healing modality. And here you are with this amazing book, Humming for Health. And so that got me super intrigued. So love to hear your story of how did you become, you know, Kathleen, the French horn player, <laughs> to become the sound lady. Tell us that. Well, I... I... My mother taught us how to play piano. My mother was uh, uh, could play piano re really well, and there were four of us kids. And she said uh, uh, we were all around second. I was in the second grade. My brothers in the third grade. You know, we were little, but we got a piano from my my dad worked at a telephone company, and they were going to throw out the old upright piano. He was like, "No, don't throw that out. My wife plays piano. We don't have a piano. I want to put it in my house." And so the story of the piano coming, so he comes over with his friends, he got the piano in the truck and the piano won't fit through the front door. So my dad, who has a high school education, took it all apart, laid the keys <gasps> out on the grass, brought it in piece by piece, put it back together and it worked. No. Wow. That was pretty good. I was very impressed. That's impressive. So mom said, we got to play the piano. It was a half an hour a day for a year. And if we didn't want to do it after that, we didn't have to follow up on it, but you had to give it a chance. So I remember she put the timer on, on the stove. Okay, Stephen plays for half an hour, then ding, and then Kathy, your turn, ding. And we would all, you know, play our piano. Mark. I was the only one who, who kept it up. Of course, when I was in high school then, my brothers and sisters were jealous that I'm sitting at the piano playing and everyone's standing around singing and they're not. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I know that, that was one. back when we sat around the piano and sang songs too. I mean, yeah. it doesn't happen the way it used to. That's beautiful. Uh, so, um, so I went into uh, classical music because it had a such a wide breadth of emotional 
possibly mm. an emotional expression. I, right. I felt like it was, um, you could, I mean, I could write little songs like popular types of songs, and that would be one thing. But if I, you know, if I heard my mother playing Rachmaninoff on the piano, I was like, there's, you know, that's solid. There's a lot of emotion there. Yeah. Uh, so I, I felt that in order to really express the breadth and depth of my feelings, which I always thought were pretty expansive, I needed to know classical music and I needed to become really good at it. And the French horn was just an instrument that um, the band director needed. At oh, the time. You know, when I was in seventh grade. I went up to him and I said, look, I already know how to play piano. I can read music. What do you need? Oh. And he, he said, well, he gave me a little pamphlet of the brass instruments. And I looked at the French horn and it said, this is the most difficult instrument in the orchestra to play. Uh, and it all often has um, beautiful solos beautiful mm -hmm. melody I'm like, right there that's the one i want to play <laughs> fascinating so that's how i picked it and uh played for uh gosh symphony orchestras probably for about 25 years wow and, uh, then um just felt that i had a, a wider deeper understanding of the power of music than just to entertain people uh that it was it was had more power than what i was you know, working with and and as much fun as I loved playing in an orchestra, I really think it was the 1812 overture that created made me a sound healer. And really? <laughs> in Massachusetts, you play the 1812 overture several times a year. You know, you're going to play it at the Fourth of July, probably at a Christmas concert, maybe at a spring concert. I mean, you play it. And I noticed on one of these occasions in one of the orchestras I was playing with it. We're doing the, you know, for the umpteenth time, the 1812 overture, and the older violinists are just kind of calling it in, you know, like they they played it many times, and they were like, oh, geez, here we go again, you know, and I said to myself, I don't want to end up like that. Oh, there's there's just too much here, and so mm. I remember I made a decision to um, stop playing what I affectionately called dead men's music. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, and I thought, well, where's my music? What's, you know, what are my sounds? And, and I remember the first time I decided to sit down in front of a music stand with no music on it with my French horn. Hmm. Because I had spent years learning how to interpret every one of those little black dots, you know, on that page. Exactly. And, and how to fit it in with all the other instruments perfectly. In crescendo, decrescendo. <laughs> all of that. Blend, blend, tuning. Um, so you really become a, a great listener, and I love listening. So, you know, that was fun. But uh, I, I didn't want to play pieces over and over again just to entertain people. I knew there was more power mm. to sound. And uh, when I healed myself from asthma around the time I was 40 by uh, finding a note that vibrated my lungs, I, I've always played with sound. So that's, mm. that's key. I mean, you got to... I enjoy playing with sound. So where some people might think, oh, it's easier to take a pill. I think, what note can I hum? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, so I found a note that vibrated my lungs and I hummed it. I figured out what the note was on the piano. I got out my horn and I played the note on the horn and I sang a perfect fifth above it into the horn at the same time. And that creates oh. this enormous chord. Oh. And all of the harmonics Right, right, right. Of, of the sounds that I was creating uh, really, you know, moved the energy in my lungs. And so I did it for 20 minutes a day. And after a few months, I didn't have to take my inhalers anymore. Um, I stopped doing it every day. I did it every now and then. And my asthma went away. And I was, mm. I was a believer. I was sound, has the power to um, change matter. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's so cool. You can actually s uh, sing a harmonic into the French horn? Yeah, well, oh. the French horn is just something that that really amplifies and resonates the buzzing that you're doing with your lips. So oh, I see. Like, I don't know how to play the French horn. <laughs> so, so, oh, right, okay, that okay. Sound, that sound goes into the horn. So if, if you go. Oh. Uh, you're, uh, and, and on the horn, it, you can hear all the harmonics better and it's much nicer sound. Um, so yeah, uh, and humming and buzz, buzzing is, whew, 
buzzing can, you know, your brain is sitting in the synovial fluid, you know. Right. You get that synovial fluid vibrating and moving, your brain gets really happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is so true. Yeah. Like, it was just different from just singing a note open. When, right. well, yes, yeah, very different because your your vibrate your face is vibrating because of the your lips mm. are going. But the other the thing about humming is, when you keep your mouth closed, all the vibrations stay inside your body. Mm, okay. And then you can use your voice to to direct the sound inside of your body, high notes, low notes, and you can find the part of your body to to vibrate with your voice. And that's really, I mean, you, you're talking about a superpower, you know, being, you know, sensitivity. And I, I think we have a superpower in our voice that we have no idea how to use. We've never been taught. And I've discovered it through playing with sound. Oh, that is super cool. Now I know that there's a, a, a small number of people who've recognized that humming is, can be extremely powerful for healing. So can you give us, you know, some stories or, or things that you've experienced over the years um, and which led you to write the book, et cetera, et cetera? Um, yeah. I'm, I worked for a long time with Sherry Edwards and bioacoustics, which was all very computer-based uh, uh, frequency, analytical software, all of that. And it, it, right. it was, unattainable to the average person. I mean, it's really, it's, it takes a real unusual skill set to be able to do that type of work, to be mm. able to have the computer prowess to move back and forth between the programs, to know the anatomy of the body and, and a little oh, bit about okay. biochemistry. I mean, it, it, people skills, you know, healing skills. I mean, it's, it's hard to put all of that together. So there aren't a lot of people who do it really well. And I thought, you know, there's going to be a day when we don't have electricity and then what am I going to do? we're going to be up the creek, you know, uh, <laughs> and I just wanted to find ways to make it more accessible. Uh, to, and the voice was just the number one. Made way. Sense. Uh, it's, there's a very important connection between the voice, the ear and the brain. Um, Doreen Davis, uh, who is an audiologist has written several books on this, but basically this, the, the, sounds that you make with your voice are being heard by your brain mm -hmm. and the sounds that you're making with your voice um are being informed by the vagus nerve which is like coming up from the lower part of the body it intertwines with the vocal cords goes right up to the brain mm. so um there's all of this information that's in the sound of your voice it's, it's biofeedback to the brain okay about the health of the body okay so you can, because you can tell by the sound of someone's voice if they're not well right you can tell if they're tired you can tell if they didn't get enough sleep you can the voice if you listen and i'm a listener if you really listen uh you can hear all kinds of things in people's voice too much fire not enough water too much earth all too much air you know you can, you can just hear imbalances in the voice but when you have a balanced voice people want to listen to you interesting people, people hear you and they instantly trust you they feel, huh. they feel the balance. Okay. Well, you know, I wanted to ask you, and I, I didn't ask Sherry this when she was on the, the podcast, uh, you know, a month or two ago. I noticed that as, well, in general, when people get older, their voice seems to get lower. And I don't know if that is just, I don't want to say normal, um, <laughs> natural, or is that some, like, kidney chi deficiency or like is that a thing I, well it does happen as people get older i always thought it was that people were smoking when they were younger and they're you know when you smoke oh right 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 really lower um i it's a it's the it's just probably the muscles getting uh looser mm. you know, maybe um, yeah I, I, I've, I've noticed that too and i i don't understand is it some kind of a deficiency i mean can we I'm 71 years old and my voice is the same as it was when I was, you know, 20. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't know. It, I, maybe it depends how you use your voice. I mean, I'm, I'm humming all the time. Mm, uh, true. And, and if you use your voice and it, it's strong and I've got a really wide range from like a low C to a high, like a three. Nice. So uh, if some, if it's something that you work with uh, on, a, on a regular basis, I, I don't see any reason why you can't keep 
the same sound. Okay. Yeah, that's very interesting. I last year I um I ran a camp and this was the first live in person camp that I was able to do since the pandemic. And so um, you know, we had a group of people. Well, I started losing my voice. And of course, it was like, you know, how many hours a day of talking and singing and doing all this stuff. Now, luckily, I had, you know, wonderful people in that were the students who also helped out with the yelling part. <laughs> Come on, get to the room, you know, <laughs> things like that. Um, but I thought was really fascinating was that my voice is still not the same now as it was almost a year ago which is fascinating. Um, one of the gals that was part of the camp, she said that she had been a, a camp counselor at some point, something like that. And she was yelling, you know, at the top of her lungs for days and days and days. And she got a raspy voice. And she said it took her eight months, I think, to recover from that, which I thought was extraordinarily a long time. But I, I'm here at 11 months. And the voice, like I am now an alto. <laughs> Where I used to be a mezzo soprano, if you will, uh -huh. you know, I thought, it, yeah, so I sing more like Karen Carpenter than I do, you know, <laughs> it's, I was like, wow, what is that? You know, I mean, I didn't tell that to Sherry, but. No, but it has to do with how much air support you have behind mm. your breathing, you know, as you speak. Um, now, playing the French horn, being a professional French horn player. I had to be able to take a deep breath and play X amount of notes and then take right. and play another X amount of notes. Uh, so I became, you know, really proficient at breathing, taking a quick deep breath and, and then using that to support the sound of the voice. Mm. Uh, so if you are using your voice and you're, you're not taking deep breaths, you're going to be straining your voice and that's going to happen. I mean, you're mm. going to start to lose it. So it's, it's about, uh, and a way to get it back would be very gentle humming. Ooh, okay, good. I wasn't sure what to do exactly. <laughs> Very gentle humming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to find the notes that your body likes. Mm -hmm. Just experiment. And how does this note feel? Where do I feel it in my body? Um, but the, the notes around your vocal cords are going to be notes that are really kind of um, in the, in the, your roundhouse, I'm thinking of a word, that you, that's your strong, is it, where your you speaking voice is. If you uh, speak, like that range? So, yeah, right, that range. So I'm okay. kind of talking here on this note here, and this is a note that's going to vibrate this part of my body. Whereas uh -huh. if I was talking up here, I'm going to feel the sound more up here. Down here, it's really low. I can feel it down in my stomach. So um, uh -huh. learn, yeah, learning how to uh, use the air to support the breath if you're projecting and you have to talk a lot. You know, I, I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> You have to you have to use your you have you have to take a deep breath and i teach everyone how to take a deep breath it's very easy the body already has a system in place for taking air in oxygen in when it needs it it's called a yawn yes mm -hmm. right? when you need when you need oxygen you, you start you don't think about yawning your body just says yawn quick you need oxygen and so what happens when, uh, if you can simulate that yawn, so your mouth is wide open, your tongue is low in the back of your throat, and you can just gulp down, uh, you know, a big bunch of air. So, and that's what I had to do as a horn player. I had to get a lot of air fast. Quickly. Okay, okay. But if, I mean, you can also take a slow, deep inhale, you know, through your nose too and fill things up. But I, I explain about um, the diaphragm muscle. And right. How, and how you want to engage the diaphragm muscle. If I say to people, take a deep breath and they go. Right. And their chest goes like this. I think there isn't a lot of lung capacity up here, you know. Right. Right. So I, I kind of explain about the diaphragm. I say it kind of sits like an upside down salad bowl on top of your innards. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I say, you know, when when you inhale, it it does this makes room for your lungs to expand to get more air. And now you've got this down here so you can push the air up. You can control the amount of air that comes out and how fast it comes out because you've taken a deep breath and you're right. the muscle. So I, I try to explain that to uh, people that I'm, you know, working with with humming, but. Uh, well, I, that, that was one of the things I remember in, uh, in acupuncture and we would have people on the table um, and we would practice breathing. And like you said, a lot of people were like, you know, breathing up here and we were 
teaching them how to do a belly breath or a qigong, you know, kind of breath. Mm-hmm. And our our way of practicing, because they had no idea what I was talking about, right? They just couldn't do it. We would actually, my acupuncture colleague, um, she had one of those big, uh, you know, pharmacopoeia books on Chinese herbs. It was nice and heavy. So she would actually plop it on their belly. <laughs> and they would practice breathing in so they would expand so the, the, the book would rise and fall and they would have to go home and practice. Yes. you know, breathing on their bed with this, with this book, but so many people don't do that. And I got to tell you, Kathleen, one of my things is I don't exhale fully. Like I, I may take a deep breath in, but you know, I'm doing block therapy. And one of the things she does is she has this block that we lie on. And boy, when you first start block therapy, it is not comfortable because that diaphragm and many people is, is, as you know, weak because mm-hmm. um, they don't really breathe properly. And so we're breathing against this block. And then she instructs us to to exhale fully through the nose, um, fully. And I realize I don't do that. <laughs> you know, I just don't think of it. But I think with the humming, that would be a way because you're consciously humming you're gonna run, you're gonna and you run out of air. air. Exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah. I even with the people that I, I work with as in the senior uh, community with Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm. Uh, people you know doing activities and i i have them humming and i teach them you know how to take a deep breath it's it's so important uh and i say okay take a deep breath and hum and hum whatever note you can for as long as you can mm. some of them can do it for six seconds you know some of them can do it for 10 seconds some of them can do it for 15 seconds but i i try to encourage them you know taking that deep breath and humming where do you feel that hum in your body? Let's sing the highest note, hum the highest note you can possibly hum, take a deep breath. This is how we end our exercises. We cool down by humming. Ah. <laughs> and I have them hum high notes, hum lo- low notes, and I just have them do a Ooh, I like that, that's cool. Yeah, and then <laughs> Okay, my my voice breaks at that top where I used to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, but but using your your voice like that, you, using the air to carry the sound, uh, but the, I mean, that's that's something interesting. I haven't heard about someone not completely emptying out, or not that you have to completely empty out, but you said you don't fully exhale. Yeah, it's just uh, everyday breathing, like yeah. talking, you know, working at the computer, things like that. I realized that that I don't fully push my belly in to fully exhale. And of course, the the, the vested interest is that, you know, the Deanna Hansen, the block therapy teacher was talking about the study, uh, They how, how they did, I don't know, they radioactively labeled carbon atoms in fat, like excess fat, and found that these carbon atoms, when the person was losing weight or losing fat, these carbon atoms actually came out of their breath. So the carbon dioxide is actually how we lose fat. And I'm like, well, I, I need to learn how to exhale properly. <laughs> and otherwise, like, why do all this CrossFit, right? And that's the funny thing is doing some CrossFit exercises. Sometimes I'm literally out of breath. And we used to be taught that's really bad for you. But now we're realizing that actually for for many, for most people, of course, you know, everyone has to like tune in and whether that's appropriate for them, but you work up to it. It's actually having a peak, you know, uh, they call it high intensity interval training nowadays, that that actually smaller amounts of exercise that are intense can actually be more helpful for heart conditioning, cardiovascular conditioning than long periods of like 60 minutes of walking or 60 minutes of aerobics. So I end up breathing a lot (laughs) during this times. Yeah, great. (laughs) Keep doing it. Yeah, that's so interesting. So if someone has, say, um, well, okay, so say they have a thyroid issue, right? And they're like, hey, Kathleen, is there like a note that I should be singing to help, you know, vibrate my thyroid? How would you respond? Okay, so Cherry Edwards, in in all of her brilliance, uh, has found that there are sort of universal notes that affect everyone in the same way. Mm. Like there's a note for the thyroid, there's a note for um, the in, like stomach and, and the digestive organs. There, there are different uh, notes that will work for everyone. And um, so 
kind of universally according to the Sherry system. I think it's the note D is, is a thyroid note. But And what I've done, I, I kind of took that one step further. Um, and because I had this, well, let's talk about chakras for a minute. So back in the 90s, I was doing, you know, meditations on my chakras. And given that I'm a musician and I live with my ears and my eyes are kind of an afterthought, I mean, I see everything, but I'm not really interested in a lot of detail. I'm just kind of looking at the big picture all the time with my eyes, but I'm listening intently, you know, with my ears. So um, when uh, I, I thought there's got to be a way, if chakras are real, I should be able to, and they're connected to the body, etherically, but they're connected, right, to the major glands of the endocrine system, right, the chakras. So um, I thought if they're real, because after a couple of years, I was like, this is all a bunch of woo-woo. It's not real. These chakras don't exist. I don't feel them. I don't see them. I, you know, I, how can I just believe that they exist? So I said, I'm going to find the sound that vibrates the chakras, and then I'll believe if I can feel the chakras hmm. vibrating. And I had read in a book a long time ago, I think it was called Spiritual Dimensions of Music. I don't think it's even in print anymore. But there is one sentence that said, you just need to, you know, hum the lowest note you can comfortably sing and you can vibrate your root chakra. Really? So I started humming low notes. And darned if I didn't feel the, vib feel the vibration in, in the, my sacrum. And I was, they're real, they're real, they exist. Oh. <laughs> and then I found... I, so I hummed up a little bit higher, found the next note that vibrated the sacral area of my body, hummed up a little bit solar plexus and kept coming up the scale. And what I, when I did it with other people, I realized every, the scale is the same for everybody. It's basically Okay. It's it, what if their chakra is not balanced? It, it's still the same note? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we all have our own chakra, personal chakra scale that depends on the range of our voice. So the lowest note that I can sing is going oh. to be different from the lowest note that you can sing. Oh, 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 okay. Right? So we all start on a different note, but after you have that first note, it's the same progressions of whole steps and half steps. It's basically... Oh, I see. It's a linear gotcha. scale. Instead of being do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, your chakra scale is do, re, mi, fi, sol, la, ti, do. You got that F sharp in there instead hmm. of the F natural, because if you if you just sing the fa, you're going to feel it kind of down here. And if you sing the fi, it's, it, you can feel it right in your heart chakra. So I just went by that and I started realizing everybody has their own chakra scale. And the advantage to this is, you know, these chakras are all connected to um, these these glands of the system that glands that turn all of our systems on and off, you know, in, insulin and thyroid and yeah. Right. So when you hum the note that would go with your thyroid, for example, I, I can help you right now today find out what your chakra scale is. We can find your lowest note that you can comfortably hum and you can hum it and you feel your sacrum, you know, vibrate. And then I can tell you what the specific note would be for your um, thyroid. And these are these are like emotional notes. These chakra notes deal with all of our emotions and balance our emotions so that when you can hum your own chakra scale or listen to the mp3s that i made with these fabulous chimes that i have um, beautiful i've never seen something like that what is that yeah, these are called choir chimes choir um, chimes and it's kind of the new age version of handbells oh okay they're, they're um, beautiful yeah they are and they you know they tell you what note uh, wow. So yeah, so I, I have like four octaves of these notes, mm. and, and I, I play with them. And I made I made all I created all all of the possible chakra scales on each note, all of the twelve notes of the scale. So depending on the lowest one where we start, yeah. right? Now what's funny is if if my voice is not what it used to be prior to the Light Warrior Training Camp last year. Does that mean my, my, the, the now I can go lower, <laughs> um, but I can't go higher. So does that mean my chakras have shifted? Like, no, no. no. Um, it, what's important is, do you feel it in your chakras? You know, do you, 
if mm. yeah it because i think our voices do change i mean little kids voices are certainly very different and then they go through oh. puberty and, and and that changes right right men's voices you know at, at puberty yeah that's interesting really really <laughs> shaky because kind of all those biological biochemistry that changes right. their bodies you can hear it in the sound of their voice um yeah so there's but what's important is just finding the root chakra note and then we'll the other ones will be i'll know exactly what they are and i can help you feel them and then figure out what that is but mm. there's the chakra sounds and in general your personal chakra sounds are to balance your emotions okay okay so the so the the root chakra where exactly on the body do we feel it when we hit that note is the perineum your sits bone, I call it. Yeah, your your sacrum, bone. your sits bone. Like kind of at the bottom. Right at the bottom, bottom of the sacrum. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, now that's a hard one to feel, and some people can't feel it right away. You have to do it three or four times, because well, let face it, we're sitting on it. I mean, it's not going to vibrate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to jump up and down to get that unnumb. <laughs> and if people have a really hard time, um, you know, feeling that, then I try to figure out according to what I heard their voice doing what their heart chakra note would be because you can really feel that note because it's your right. lungs and it's not as dense a part of the body and you can really feel okay. it. Okay. So one way or the other I can usually, you know, help. And then what and the, and then the choir bell, because it's so not loud, but like I've noticed that um I used to my spiritual healer used to have all these singing bowls. And then she would play all the different sizes. And I really liked the big ones. Uh, because it was very low and, and that's probably where I needed to be more rooted so that I could feel in my sacrum. No problem. <laughs> it was like, yeah, Whoa. well, that, that was your note. Um, and yeah, I think the lowest note I have here is this, the big one. Ooh. Mm, that's pretty low. That is the G. Mm. an octave in a fourth below middle c okay 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 <laughs> Ooh, have, i've got lots of home play to do okay I, i'm gonna put a little wrinkle here kathleen because <laughs> you may not have heard this but um but i'm sure you could figure it out because of you know the shocker work you've already done so recently i've been learning from one of my mentors um who has uh has been for many years has contact with off-world beings these off-world beings actually taught the egyptians now, somewhere along the, the the teaching where they were training, you know, healing, etheric surgery, all these kinds of things, uh, one of the uh, pharaohs decided they were going to delete five of the 13 chakras so that the average everyday non-royal, if you will, person would have access to the seven. We've been teaching the seven and the off-world beings say, well, it's now to reactivate the five and what's fascinating is the five that are missing are kind of like the black keys you know you got c to c so they're the black keys so the position on the like this is actually the seventh chakra and the heart actually has two the heart in and the heart out and they're different colors so now that i know where those are potentially i could because you know vibrate and feel which note it is there for all 13 well 13th actually is up here but it's the first of the next octave <laughs> so i may or may not be able to feel this but i'm so sensitive i probably could <laughs> you know this is the 13th yeah, it's, it's hard to feel i can't feel that one uh either i can i can feel the ones the humming is going on inside the physicality of the body yeah I can feel those ones but it, i can't feel the extra yeah but this 13th is the first chakra of the next is the root chakra of the next octave of our evolution. So, you know, theoretically, do we really need to feel that? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but I think it's fascinating. The brain knows it's there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So Kathleen, you're gonna be like, oh, I can do a more uh, well, expansive no, 13th chakra. Figured out, I figured out what I call the ascension, the ascension chakra scales. I mean, it starts with the uh, earth star chakra. Oh, okay, earth. cool, 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 yeah. So that's one, and, you, and then your root chakra is two. Yeah, there's a different system. Right. Then mm -hmm. And then this one up here uh, is eight. Right? Okay, eight, yep. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. That way is how I get. And I figured out the scale that happened. Oh, okay. That's why, whole to why people like whole tones because in 
there's three different sections of that whole scale that are just three whole tones in a row. Mm. And, the, and so whole tone scales are, are um, people have been using them for healing. They figured out these whole tones are important. I don't think they understand. They correlate to your chakras. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. But when you sing your, when you learn your chakra scale and you hum it, your body gets so excited. It's mm. like, mom, they're playing my song. I play okay. this song. You know? <laughs> that is pretty neat. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the work of uh, my colleague, Dr. Jeffrey Thompson. Um, he is a, um, an originally a music student, uh, then became a chiropractor. And then um, he realized that there are certain notes in the universe that would be able to shift the, the spine back into place. And so he was like, wow, you know, there's a note for the healthy liver. There's a note for the healthy pancreas. There's a note for the healthy L5, T1, whatever. Yeah, and then for every, for every vertebrae. Yeah, yeah. And then he discovered that if he balanced the brain, however, that all the other frequencies would even out. So he focused his brainwave entrainment on just the brain. But the way he does is very different from most brainwave entrainment because uh, I actually don't like most brainwave entrainment because of the, they try to get you into theta or beta or, you know, whatever. And they go, wah, 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 wah. And that's annoying. Like those of us who are musician, musicians, I think it's just annoying, okay? <laughs> but but Dr. Thompson does it inside the brain. So there's maybe a five cycles per second shift um, inside. So the left ear and the right ear um, actually hear something slightly uh, off, well, we but can't, we don't- We can't hear below 15 Hertz. Yeah, so it's very, the very- body, The body can react. If, um, if you put eight Hertz in one ear and 12 Hertz in another ear- That's right. Your body will also hear 10 hertz. The yeah, average, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I don't need the wah, 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 wah <laughs> sound at all. Uh, and and uh, But his is very, very interesting. So I went to his place. He was trying to, he was doing this program that only he, at the time he could do, and they were trying to get it computerized. But basically, he would run somebody through the entire scale and literally did what you just did at the beginning is right. And we would sing it. Uh, and then he would actually do our heart rate variability and figure out which tone got us into that parasympathetic sympathetic balance. And mine was interesting. It was actually, uh, well, interesting to me. It was F plus 27. So it was like, between F and F sharp, there's like, if there's a hundred gradations between it, it was F plus 27. So when I sang it, he recorded my voice mm -hmm. and then played it back to me with pretty music. So I wouldn't get bored. <laughs> so that's called bio tuning. So it's very similar to what you're talking about. And, and then we actually pumped the, the music that was customized to me through a sound table. So the entire body would vibrate for that particular tune yeah it's very very interesting of course it's not very portable <laughs> so humming is very portable <laughs> that's it it's it's always with you i mean and even during the the pandemic you know i did a lot of humming because humming creates nitric oxide in your sinuses right so yes. you can kill germs in your sinuses by humming mm. and and if you want to hum the notes that vibrate this part of your body, and it's going to be a note that's kind of in the upper part of your speaking range, but you could also just kind of put put your fingers next to your nose and just kind of hum up and down. Oh, I can feel it. Yes, and you'll find the note where you you get the most vibration. Go go a little bit at a time. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's kind of going from here to here to here to here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, and once oh, because I lots of people are having sinus issues right now. They're congested. They're having sinus issues. So what you're saying is, if you can put your fingertips here and hum and feel the vibration, that's likely the most helpful in that area. Yes, and your sinus is going to start to drain. Uh, Doctor. Gordon was his I think he's still, he's a cancer doctor in New York City. Um, but he did lots of uh, experiments with, with sound. And he had a, a person who had chronic sinusitis for his entire life. He hummed one hour a day for four days in a row, and it was gone. One hour a day for four days in a row. Wow. Yeah. 
So, wow. you know, half an hour here, half an hour there, 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes okay. there. He did it four days in a row and he cleared his chronic sinusitis. Mm. So one of the medications, nothing would drain. That's it. amazing. Vibrate. Vibrate. Well, it makes sense because, you know, we they've discovered like the lymphatics in here. Now they call them glymphatics. Like if they don't move, right, you get congestion like any other place where it doesn't move. So if you're vibrating, you're literally moving the fluid so it can drain like your lymphatics can drain. And therefore, your sinus is clear if you're draining your lymphatics makes so much sense. Yes. Yes. And I Sherry has a uh, Sherry says that uh, the note B universally mm -hmm. is she calls it the water gate. It oh. controls all the fluids and all the water in the body. So B, huh? I, the note B. So what I did, and I did this with a number of um, of her uh, theories, is I took my horn, I played the note B, I sang the harmonics, made all the chords, so we had all the harmonics of the note B, and I created a, a lymph audio file that will move your lymph. Uh, great, I'm getting that one. <laughs> I've yeah, one, I've got one for thyroid. I've got one for digestion. Oh, that's great. Well, a set, you know, this the whole like elevation or expansion of our consciousness seems to come with some quote unquote side effects on the body. Um, in that I have found a lot of sensitive souls will swell. Like when there's like a an opening, like an astrological event, like a big thing where our consciousness expands. It's like the body's like. It's almost like the 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 water, which I understand now as a conscious being, the water is now um, imbued with these codes. And unless we know how to handle it, it hangs around a little longer than I would prefer. So some people were literally, I, at one point, uh, Kathleen, I was so big, I had gained 45 pounds when I was doing a lot of energy healing work. And I thought, well, I'm not changing my exercise, my diet, nothing like that. And I thought, I don't... I asked God, I'm like, okay, so am I getting fat? And the answer was no. And I'm like, well, what is this? Like, I literally was wearing a jacket that I was going to rip like the Hulk. Like I was going to go. And it was like, I was like this. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got so, it started in the belly. Cause there's a lot of room there, right? <laughs> started in the belly. And then it started the boobs and then the here and then the hips. And then finally the legs and my massage therapists were like, we're kind of at a loss where you're not that, but you're definitely poofy so talk about lymph right being you know just stopped and uh long story why you know how i figured that out but it was ascension related um and then finally was able to manage the energy in the codes and the water and was able to shrink down <laughs> to a more manageable size but that was fascinating and it would have been really helpful i think had i you know been practicing the stuff that you're talking about you know, the humming, the, the moving the lymph in this very natural uh, way. Um, I have a big machine that I've since, you know, bought, uh, I think, you know, uh, those vibration plates, mm -hmm. you know, power plate. Um, and I love it. It's just very loud and not portable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't deal with loud. Okay. <laughs> yes, because you're, you're so clear audience and very sensitive here. Now you said mention about where you feel the, the vibration of your humming in the body. What if it's an extremity? I'm, I'm like, I'm having some challenges with feeling my knee, for example, or feeling my elbow, like when I'm humming. So how do we figure out what the tune is here? Well, the knee will probably be about the same note as the root chakra. Okay. Uh, that kind of goes all the way down the legs. And then when you get your toes vibrating, that's your earth star chakra. Oh. Uh, but there's only really a half step mm. space between two distance between two notes. There's only a half step between the uh, root chakra and your earth star chakra. So any place on your legs is going to be somewhere in between that half step. You know, like you were saying, if it's F, it might be F minus 47. Right. You know, uh, hurts. So, uh, yeah, um, I would, your, anything in your arms, in your hands, mm -hmm. and it will be heart related. Cause. Oh, know, okay. So the heart chakra note. Oh, okay. The note that would, that would work here and the sake and the, uh, root chakra. That makes sense. One that works, you know, with the legs. Okay. Well, that makes sense also too. I mean, if. I mean, between uh, the Egyptian pathways wrap around like a spiral and the Chinese pathways make a straight line. <laughs> so that's that's heart meridian and uh, pericardium meridian, you know, they go right down here. So, yeah, yeah, 
That's kind of neat. And so tell us about your um, your book, where to get it, uh, what people will expect when they get a copy of your book. Humming for Health, Sound Tools for Physical and Emotional Balance. Um, there, I mean, the, the chapters in the book, if I just give you a quick overview of, of what's in it. Sure. If you get old, you can't see. Oh, we'll have to hum our eyes. <laughs> I have to work on that too. <laughs> yep. Um, so the first chapter is listening or receiving a sound. Uh, how to hear your soul sound. Mm. Matter vibrates. Sound is vibration. Therefore, sound affects matter. It took me 20 years to figure out how to say that that simply. Because people okay. say, what's sound healing? Matter vibrates. And people go, well, yeah, okay. We agree there. Okay. And sound is vibration. Yeah, of course. Put those two together. Therefore. Sound effects matter. You yes. just have to know the right note, the right frequency for that right okay. piece of matter, right? Perfect. Um, there's this chapter on toning, humming, giving voice to a sigh, mantras. So mm -hmm. when I, uh, I've just got a couple on the panel that I've created in the last couple of weeks. One is, uh, how wide can I open my heart? And the other one is gather yourself. Because <laughs> I'm always out there. Gather yourself. But I write them in the key of the chakra in the area where the energy is being held is being stuck so okay. i write little, little mantra songs for myself and i record them and i play them while i'm doing the dishes you know or uh, it's just a way of when your ear hears your voice telling you something yeah yeah it listens <laughs> right right so i the sound of my if i hear the sound of my voice saying you know asking the question how wide can i open my heart and um, there's a response that's, that's just unique than mm -hmm. if I sang, I sang it to someone else. But when you sing to yourself, when you hum to yourself, your brain is so interested in, in what you're doing. I mean, the brain is listening to the sound of our voice all day long mm -hmm. to know what, what frequencies are strong, what frequencies are weak, what do we have to put on the back burner, we have to get these tasks done, we got this much sleep. We got this nutrition, mm. you know, what, you know, the brain is doing that triage all day long and the sound of your voice is, uh, is informing it, uh, what, what, what the body needs. So the brain is listening all day long. And when it hears the sound of your voice coming back to it, that, that, that feedback loop is very powerful. Oh. So I highly recommend, I mean, one of the sessions that I do is teach, teaching people how to, I, I have a mantra writing session and we, we just come up with an affirmation, what, what, what do they want to work on? Where's the energy in the body? What chakra does it go with? What's your personal chakra note for that part of that bot of your body? Hmm. Let's write a little a simple little mantra around that note. And we'll use do and me and soul and the important notes that resonate with that note. And uh, I have them sing it. And I create a little piano accompaniment and I put it on a tape and I send it to them. Wow. <laughs> and then they can, they can listen to that little affirmation with their, I have them singing it. I record That's amazing. their voice singing it. And then I go to the piano and I, you know, create. So when they're singing, are they humming or they're, they're toning? Singing, they're, they're singing a, a, a phrase, an affirmation phrase of oh. something they want to work on. You know, if it's a self power issue, it's you know, something like, I'm a powerful person. And we just do a little oh. phrase like that, repeat it over and over again. I record their voice, create an accompaniment, send them the tape. And it, right. it Oh, it's that's cool. Yeah. Sometimes I giggle because I, I think about like back in church, my old Catholic days where the 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 priest couldn't sing on key to save his life. It was yeah, so I funny. Like you can't sing. <laughs> and we were all like you know, on the pews. <laughs> And so we'd go home and we would like pretend like it's so funny how children do this. It's like, you know, like um, body of Christ and like we'd be on tune, right? <laughs> yep. yep. No, but in, in the old Latin, O ra pro nobis. Um, I can't remember what all the Latin was, but what I heard in my little ears was O rotten donuts, eat them on a rainy day. And, <laughs> I, That's hysterical. Latin. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, no. Um, in my experience as growing up, you know, Catholic and Catholics are afraid <laughs> yep. to sing. You get to, you want to sing, you got to get to good Baptist church. They Aha, sing. Yeah, I, that's what I heard. 
Yep. <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah, you don't you don't go to Catholic church for a good song. I mean, the, the, at least the priests don't get vocal training. <laughs> no. And that's why a lot of it is just repeating the same note over and over yes. again. Amen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if they were on tune, it wasn't that bad. But it was, you know, if they're really off tune, we just like the, all of us would be trying not to laugh. <laughs> yeah. And he's dying mm -hmm. a thousand deaths knowing he sounds like that. Oh, and then he's feeling like he's forced to sing because they told him he had to sing <laughs> for the entire congregation. Um, so uh, the soundlady.com, right, is where people can find you and then also your services. So you work with people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom. You know, I had a okay. studio years ago and then the pandemic happened and then I went online and it, I can do everything online pretty much that I could do, in, you know, in person. So uh, I work with people online. I help them find their personal chakra scales. Mm. Um, uh, and uh, I, or I teach them how to make a, how to do a sonic selfie. Nice, a sonic yeah. selfie. I love that. That's selfie. beautiful. Uh, which is really to take a recording of your voice, and now you have a voice print. Right. And you can see uh, one of the, and this is using Sherry's software, and it's free. You can go online to soundhealthportal.com. Sound yeah. And you can take your own voice print, and you can see the pattern of notes you use when you speak. Da 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 da. We all right. have this, this pattern of notes that we use. What are the notes that you use more than others? What are the notes you don't use at all? Mm -hmm. What systems do they connect to? And is there a correlation to your health as to why, hmm, E, you keep, can't quite get that E out. Well, E is about self-expression. E is about wet mu mucous membranes and lungs. Mm -hmm. And, um, and are, is that, do you have a lot of allergies? I mean, so there's so many things that you can figure out by just getting a simple recording of your voice and getting a bar graph of how many times you used each note of the scale. Huh. Okay. And so that, that would be your sonic selfie. And then we could create a mantra around the weak song, the weak note, the note that's not there or the note okay. that's not there very often and get you to use it more and gradually reintroduce it back into your frequency. Mm. Okay. That, that's great. That's so it's so good. funny when I was talking to Sherry, because she's so, you know, incredibly uh, clear audience, just dawned on me. She's probably analyzing my voice this whole time we're talking. So I said, uh, Sherry, do you turn it off or are you analyzing me? Right. And she's like, without skipping a beat, she goes, you have no ego. And I'm like, that is the nicest thing anybody said to me this week. You know? It was so funny. Right. And after we hung, you know, clicked the record button off, she said some other amazing things. I'm like, oh, I wish I recorded that. Yeah, <laughs> but it was so really interesting. Cool. Just fascinating. Yeah. But the work she that. Well, and I can do one of the things that she can do too is I can hear the sounds coming out of people that they can't hear. Oh. Um, so, for example, because our body, our brain, sometimes you'll hear a sound in your ear. It's just, it's not, I'm not talking about tinnitus, but sometimes <laughs> you'll hear a high pitched sound in your ear and it'll be there for a bit and then it'll go away. Right, right. Right. And this is your brain trying to balance something that's out of balance in your body. Oh. So, if you hear that sound and you hum it yourself and amplify it, it will work, you know, a lot faster. But, but there's those little sounds that the body is making. I mean, Sherry can hear, can touch a tree and find the frequency of the tree or hold a banana and, it, you know, she can hear the sound of the banana. Um, I'm not quite that adept at it, but I can, I mean, I was on the phone with a friend of mine who was a doctor and um, I kept hearing this high pitched sound in my ear. I said, I know this isn't mine. I said, excuse me, I have to sing this to you. I think it's for you. So let me sing it. She was okay. So I hummed the song through the telephone and she, I stopped and she goes, oh, thank you. I have had an earache for a couple of days and it just wouldn't go away. And as soon as you sang that note, it left. Oh, neat. Um, so I, I can hear, uh, Sherry is able to do that. You can kind of hear sounds come. The body is making these frequencies to try and balance itself. Mm. And, um, they're unconscious. You know, you can't hear them, but someone like Sherry and myself can hear them and sing it back to you and go, Oh. oh, neat. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right. So uh, the soundlady.com where we can find you, um, your services. Yep. The book is on the website, Amazon, everything. No, actually, it's not on Amazon. It's on no, Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Rose Dog Books. Oh, okay. Rose Dog Books. Okay. Rosedogbooks.com. Perfect. Also, also, so you can, you can just get a PDF copy download of it on my webpage, I think, for I don't know, 9 or $10. 
but I also have a, a CD from with my friend Sean that I call Prayer Songs, and these are all the meditation songs that I did for myself for years. I finally recorded. Um, um, there's a, and where's the lymph one? <laughs> well, it, yeah. So if you go to the soundlady.com under shop tab, okay, you'll see uh, the lymph and the sh thyroid and the individual chakra scales and the colon and the kidneys, and that's all. That's all there to to download and listen to. Um, and all, all the types of sessions that I give, the personal chakra scale session, the mantra sessions, the um, sonic selfie sessions. Okay. Uh, I, I do on online. Uh, I have a, uh, a, a new, uh, it's not quite ready for prime time, but I've created a, a series of notes that will take you out of an anxiety attack or PTSD. I mean, really will come. And it's one of those universal things that will work for everybody. Mm. So I was trying to figure out how can I help people um, if they don't know what their personal chakra scale is, and, and why do they have to pay me first to you know to learn how to do that? Can I just create something that would automatically you know work for everybody? Mm. And I fig I figured it out. I went into deep meditation and I figured it out. And so um, I call it the emotional stabilizer. Oh, that's a good name. Okay. And, and I, I haven't copyrighted it yet. I've got it out to a few people who are testing it, ah. and, you know, giving me feedback. But when I when I finish it, um, I'm going to be pretty excited to be able to kind of get that out into the world because people, I mean, there's so many people dealing with anxiety. Totally. Yeah. When you finish it, please let us know. We'll share it with our community um, so they can, you know, get it directly from you as soon as it's launched. This is definitely a lot of... Uh, anxiety <laughs> for highly sensitive people who feel too much you know yeah yeah oh that's wonderful and ptsd it, will, it can take it come down you know bring that right nice. down. it's gonna, it's gonna balance i figured out how to play everybody all of everybody's chakra notes in this certain just in a chromatic scale basically um but the perfect fifth above five notes above the chakra note is the note that correlates to the emotional uh, energy field of that chakra. Okay. So, so it's it's playing all the chakra notes and all of the chakra balancing notes. So ah. it calms everything down. Very and, nice. And it works in like 10 minutes. I gave it to a person who was very bipolar and right now he's in this like ecstatic phase and he's just been going so fast and he couldn't slow down and I sent it to him and I said, give this a try. And he was like, is very relaxing. Oh, <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think very I'm cool. but I, I got to get a little more feedback and then before I, you know, send it out to the public. But I, I'm got a lot of hope for it to be able to help people. Oh, that's exciting. Well, as we wind down, I uh, would love for you if you have like a, you know, last words of wisdom for those listening in or watching. Well, I. I would just like to emphasize that you ha you have a hidden superpower in your voice that you really don't understand, and it's not your fault. You were, I think we should teach in second grade how oh. kids become their, you know, why not? Uh, it's something that's so personal, and it's always with us, and the sound of our voices um, is, is the most powerful healing tool you have at your disposal 24-7. Mm. It, so it's it's learning how to use it. Uh, experimenting with it. And this is for people who, you know, like sound and use their ears. People who are really visual are not really going to be, you know, drawn to this type of work, right? It's people who love to sing. It's people who love to mm. listen to music. It's people who can, you know, feel music and music you know, gets them all excited. Um, a visual artist might not be interested in this at all. Uh -huh. um, but that was, again, that was like when I was trying to visualize my chakras for those years and I got black, nothing. <laughs> and nothing but then when i could feel the vibration it was like yay that, i understand it so it's it's the power of the voice to mm. uh, uh, if you feel that people aren't listening to you maybe there's something in your voice that's just saying oh. i don't trust you i don't it's not important what you're saying because of the way you're saying it oh my gosh i just had a huge aha when you said that like there's a friend of mine who is sharing that she isn't being listened to yeah. and uh but when i listen to her voice it's i don't know how to describe it 
but it feels like a weak, like, like she's weak, but she's not, she's a very strong person, but the voice sounds weak, almost like, oh, I'm not going to be listened to, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to describe yeah, but it. So there could be a, a, a blockage in the thyroid, yeah. in, in the throat chakra somewhere yeah. that, that uh, you can definitely clear. Wow. Knowing the right notes to hum and um, working with, maybe it's a past life thing. Uh, I've also been certified recently as a uh, what, integrative soul tech, an integrative soul technology, which is a way of finding these un, all the unconscious patterns that are running us behind the scenes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a way of, br of bringing them forward, having a little conversation with them, giving them a new job, thanking them for their old past help or whatever. If it's not serving me anymore, I'll okay, right. right give them a new job. Right. Back in, fill the place space up with light and you know, nice all kinds of wonderful things oh how fun oh that's great well kathleen it's been such a pleasure to have you on light warrior radio today i love your work it's fantastic um look really forward to that emotional stabilizer coming out and um Definitely going to your website to get the lymph one because I'm always very fascinated with water and lymph. So anything related to that? Yeah. Well, it's me playing the horn and playing the harmonics and the singing into the horn and, and all of the harmonics of the note B. That's so perfect. B and C are about, B is about small circulation and C is about large muscle circulation. Mm, nice. Very cool. Yeah. So the soundlady.com, everyone. So thank you so much, Kathleen, and want to thank all of our listeners and our subscribers and from watching. And if you are watching this on YouTube or any other video channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so we can bring you more beautiful, amazing people. Wonderful. All right. Thanks. And if people want to contact me, there's a form on the front page of the website. So perfect. Awesome. Yay. Awesome. Thank awesome. Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk to all of your people. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you. Thanks everyone for listening in until next time. Bye for now.